Well, thanks very much for attending today. And it's now it's my privilege to introduce our uh, keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Matthew Winia. As I mentioned earlier, he's a professor of medicine, uh, chair, uh, the director of our Center for Biomedical Ethics and Humanities, which is housed in the Fulgenity Pavilion right behind us here. Um, and a national figure um, who's going to talk to you today um, about uh, what it means to be a doctor and a professional. So, Dr. Winia. Uh, June 1997, uh, my wife and I had just finished training in Boston. We were driving to Chicago. We had two young boys. She was seven months pregnant with our third, and the NBA finals were on. And I know this is before many of you were born, but some of you will actually have memories of this because it's game five of a series, the second three-peat uh, for the Chicago Bulls, which is our new home team. And so we're listening to this game. It's a tied series, two to two, and Michael Jordan has the flu, or maybe it's food poisoning. We've never known. He looks terrible. He is literally staggering sometimes on the floor. He's getting an IV um, during halftime, and he scores 38 points including the three-pointer to seal the game at the end. And Scottie Pippen had to help him off the floor afterwards. He literally looked like a rag doll. And uh, Jordan subsequently has said that game was physically the most demanding thing he had ever done. And Pippen was asked about this, and I'll never forget the quote in the Tribune the next day, because what Pippen said was, what a professional. What a professional. You all are here today on the embarking point of a journey to become medical professionals, sort of the quintessential professionals. But what does that actually mean? And I'll stipulate for medicine, it does not necessarily mean showing up to work when you are contagious with the flu. But what does it mean? Right? There's a version of being a professional, which is just you get paid for your work. Um, I did community theater as a, as a young person. And one summer, I became a professional actor because I was paid for a couple roles. I was never any good at it. And in fact, in our profession, sometimes giving your work away for free is the hallmark of a professional. I've actually thought about professionalism um, and written about professionalism since 1997, since that quote. And I still find it useful uh, to sort of break the word down. So uh, profess means to speak in public, to declare, right? Like you profess love to your spouse at a wedding ceremony. A profession is a group of people making a common declaration together about what it means to be a member of that group, what it means to be one of them, the educational, the practice standards, the values that they uphold and share together, their promises that are made from the group to the public and to the people they serve. A person who meets those promises, who lives up to those values, is a professional and they're their actions are professional insofar as they live up to those declared values and standards. They're unprofessional when they're out of bounds for what the group has agreed are its standards. So what is professionalism? Well, what are other isms? Capitalism, consumerism, Catholicism, empiricism, uh, racism, ageism, ableism, these are all ideologies. They're beliefs about capital or consumers or various social structures and how they uh, operate in society. Isms can be dangerous or they can be helpful, but they're all beliefs about how the world works or ought to work. 
So medical professionalism is a set of beliefs about the ideal roles and responsibilities of medical professionals in the world where people are sick and suffering and need our help. It's the belief that having this set of shared promises that we all uphold is important because it's what allows the members of the public and our patients to trust us, even if they haven't met us yet. It's the belief in the relevance of our social compact with patients and the public. The idea that patients and the public can and should make assumptions about who we are and what we do about our competence the moment you put that coat on. It's the belief that consumerism, caveat emptor, doesn't work well sometimes in medicine. Our patients sometimes need to be able to trust us and our ethics. It's the belief that it's a good idea for society to have a group of people with shared expertise and shared values who are given the privilege and the obligation of self-regulation to uphold those standards and values across the group. And I hope some of you are now thinking, wait a minute, isn't enforcement of shared common views among in-groups just one of the ways in which we reinforce and maintain misogyny and racism and power structures in society. Is professionalism just a cudgel of the establishment to enforce conformity? If you are thinking that, you are not entirely wrong. Sustaining a profession is about sustaining a cohesive group. It's about setting and enforcing standards, and that has dangers. But that's also not the whole story. We get to choose the values and standards that we share and enforce within our profession. We write our code of ethics. And that's a task that is carried out over time, over generations. It's not a technical problem where we set our values and walk away we have to keep working at it in every generation. We can and we have gotten it wrong sometimes. There are tragic examples where a generation or more of doctors has gotten something very wrong from technical things like what causes ulcers or whether exogenous estrogen uh, helps to prevent heart attacks to social issues like medical racism and eugenics. New generations then have to come along and repair the damage. Our profession has to own this entire history, the good and the bad. It's tempting to give up on the ideal of professionalism when you realize that when we choose the wrong path, it has very serious consequences. The wrong social norms in our profession really harm society. But that's also what proves the power of the ideal of professionalism. Our task in every generation is to harness that power, the power of professionalism, the power of our privileges, the power of our voice, to protect those who need us the most. So I'll close with this thought. In the coming years, you're going to hear professors talk about this concept of professional identity formation. That's the idea that during your training, you will gradually come to take on the identity of being a physician, not just acting like one. You will increasingly take ownership of our profession. You and your white coat will belong together. Professional identity formation is the process where you will eventually be able to say, like the great philosopher Pete Maverick Mitchell, Doctor isn't what I do, it's who I am. You were supposed to laugh at that because that's a, that's a reference to Top Gun. Anyways. So I just, I just uh, have conveyed to you that our professional identity, what it means to be a doctor, is not as fixed and immutable as some of us think or would like, and that we've gotten it wrong sometimes. That's a disconcerting thought. It is also empowering. 
to know that our professional identity was not perfected generations ago, never to be questioned again, to know that we've got some things right, most of the answers on most of the tests you take, if they're correct, they are actually correct. COVID reminded us that we show up for our work, even when it's risky. We've got things right. Protect and defend the things we've got right. Undoubtedly, we've still got others wrong, and we are going to need your help to change those. Discerning between those, of course, means balancing humility and courage, confidence and diffidence as you learn and you gather experience. But I want to emphasize today, as you become a physician, that you are not alone in this journey. By definition, being a professional means being a part of a group, doing this challenging work together, trying to get better all the time, all of us. George Carlin, uh, the comedian, once said, isn't it unnerving that doctors call what they do practice? But he was right. That is what we do. We are always practicing. We are always trying to get better, trying to balance our courage and our humility, helping each other, having each other's backs, holding each other accountable. Get comfortable walking this challenging path together with me, with us. Make it not just what you do, but who you are, because that's what it means to become a medical professional. Welcome to this shared journey. Thank you, Dr. Winnie. If you wouldn't mind not going way too far. My name is Abby Laura, and I will be presenting the 16th Annual Faculty Professionalism Award. This award recognizes individuals who have served as exemplars and role models for professionalism. For students, residents, faculty, and professional colleagues. It recognizes individuals who are known for their compassion, for the respect for learners, for their commitment to service, and for their dedication to lifelong learning. The 16th Annual Faculty Professionalism Award will be awarded this year to Dr. Matt Winiam. Matt is being recognized for his scholarship, mentoring, local and national leadership, clinical care, and community involvement. One nominating letter said this about Matt. He has fostered the development of a center that is unique and extremely valuable as a resource to our campus, the broader local and state community, as well as nationally and international community. His scholarly work, teaching locally, nationally, and internationally, have enhanced professionalism in the practice of medicine in the conduct of research and in education. So it's my pleasure to present Dr. Matt Winnie with this award.